claws nails claw nails are you a fan or not a fan are you born with them do you wish to correct them that is what we are going to tackle in today's video Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paola of paolaponsanails.com and I help current and aspiring nail techs become thriving entrepreneurs by mastering all of their services using premium soft gel only. If this sounds like a niche you'd like to consider exploring, then at the end of this video, do consider subscribing. What I want to show you here are two of my nails, okay? And they are actually kind of different. I don't know if you can tell, but this one wants to point downward. And this one wants to just be straight. Now, this is an extension and I did make it this way to claw down a little bit. But believe it or not, actually, <laughs> that is my real nail, what it wants to do anyways. So can you see the difference there? on how this nail just goes straight with the bone here and this one goes there. Now, if you were in a nail competition or part of one, you would be judged that this is the correct shape. However, where are my 90 babies? <laughs> 90s, uh, we know that this was popular actually way back then and people purposely tip the nail or the plastic tip downward to achieve the claw look. Now, it, whether it's a matter of convenience or fashion, this typically is not preferred. That is why in nail competitions, the one that is aligned with the bone, the nails, the enhancements, the extensions that are aligned with the bones wins, <laughs> okay? This would con be considered like improper application just because it's not practical for a lot of daily uh, to-dos, okay? So if I wanna type, this gets in the way and I actually end up typing with my fingernails, right? Because it's the first thing making contact. Um, if I'm trying to open something, if a nail is curved, that's a little hard. Not that you should be opening anything, right? But in case of an emergency and you need your nail, then yes, right? So again, this is just not considered proper application. And a lot of the times, forget about that. We have 10 fingernails and for a whatever reason, these two, the index, right? always want to tip down like a claw. So today we are going to fix that because if you were born like this, right, with not all 10 fingernails going that way, you might embrace it, right, and just rock it, but it's kind of annoying when nine or eight out of your fingernails, right? Eight fingernails are all doing this, and then you got these two claw nails doing that. Okay, why it happens, I'm not sure, but it is annoying and aesthetically can look a little bit off. So we're gonna correct it. Now, there is a couple ways how you can correct it, but is they're both are going to be, or all of them, as far as I know, are going to be extensions. There is nothing really that you can do, you know, different. I don't know if you can have surgery, I don't know about that. All I know is that you can correct this with an extension. And today I'm going to show you how to do that with a freeform extension. So let's get into this step by step. First, what I wanna do if a client comes in like this or you have a nail like this, you wanna shorten this nail and you wanna break the news soon okay new client comes in says hey you know by the way i have this nail that always wants to do that well you're gonna have to have a talk and say you know what this nail's gotta go and we have to trim it down so we can give you a an extension that will do that versus this okay so make that known <laughs> so that there is no hesitancy or surprise when you go to clip this. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to sh shorten this nail. I'm also going to thin it down, almost down to the natural nail. I can leave a little bit of product. I'll show you how you can apply an extension with a little bit of product on the nail still. And then I'm going to move on from there, okay? So let's get into the removal process.
Okay, here we are. What do we do next? How do we fix that claw cricket nail, right? Okay, first things first, we want to file this in into a round nail because when we use a form, if we have corners on the nail here, that's going to interfere with how our form fits. So let's fix that right now. If I would just tuck my form underneath here, guess what? I run the very likely risk of this nail still facing downward because this free edge is dictating where the form should go or how it should be positioned, which in this case, it would be positioning it downward. It'd be forcing it downward. That's why it is so important to get rid of the remaining free edge. I know you're scared. I know a lot of you, no worries, kind of cheat your way into forms by tucking them underneath a little bit of free edge so they stay put. We are going to have to combat this. Okay, we are going to have to conquer this fear right now. Okay, I'm taking an emery board. An emery board is just a very gentle grit thin board file to help me shorn this nail. And this ensures that I'm not too aggressive with this nail. You always wanna be nice to your natural nails. I could have shortened it a little bit more just to get here a little faster or used even like a coarser file before switching to the emery board, but this is going to be fine. We'll get there. This is gonna take a little longer. Okay, now I wanna start curving these in, tucking them in so that they do not dictate where our form points towards. Okay, dust this off. Again, the goal here is no corners. You could have also clipped them and tucked them in, but I left a little bit of product on my nail because I also want to show you how you can do that and still have a successful freeform extension. Okay. Now I know a lot of you use the full coverage tips also, and you can definitely use that if you're a little intimidated by forms to correct this. Let me show you how that would work. Okay, so here I have a full coverage tip. These are the Cocos Jelly. And then you just saw me kind of mold it a little bit, a little more rounded so it's narrow. And then if I fit it on here and I hold it, if it'll let me hold it, <laughs> you see that I can correct this. If I'm able to have enough gel in there, a little bit more thick viscosity gel, that keeps the nail upright like this. But if I put gel in here, and then to adhere it, I press too hard on it. Guess what? It's still going to tip this way. So what I want to do is put a little bit of gel, just hold the back a little bit, and then just let that gel do its thing, run on its own. If you need to bring it down a little bit, you'll tap the tip, and then it would make your nail straight, but there's still a little bit of a claw effect, not too much. What you don't want to do with this tip is press it down because then you're just literally going to press that claw shape in there, okay? So yes, you can kind of cheat your way with these. Just remember to keep the pressure right here where it connects. That way it remains straight. I think there's still a little bit of claw effect on that one. So that is why freeforms are like super cool. Like I don't see them going away anytime soon. <laughs> they just allow you to correct those natural nails even more. Okay, so now I have my nail here. I still have a little bit of product there. I want that, okay? 
what I want to do is now is prep this nail. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then bring you back on board when I'm ready to put this free form. All right, beauties. So we are back. I got my form ready and I got my extension gel ready. You can use Vetra extension clear. This is the leaf gel uh, sculpting gel. You can also use Cocos Excel Builder for this process. I've got my base on. And again, I still have a little bit of product there. No biggie, that, that's my intention. And here is my form. I like to pre-pinch just so it's really easy to put on. Okay, so what I wanna do with my form, this is how I would activate another claw nail, okay? You want another claw nail, you tip your form downward. You want a straight nail, guess what? Your form stays straight and it aligns with your bone here, okay? So it's like a continuation of your bone. Now we want to make sure it's straight. So again, I go into client's view this way, hold it, and start attaching it just a tiny bit. It's still tipping a little bit forward. It would want to do that because that's what the nail naturally does, but we are going to train it not to do that. We don't want it to do that. So we're gonna go a little straight. I'm pinching here in the center of the form to really train it to stay upward, okay? I'm gonna check this angle, make sure it's still straight, like so. And I'm gonna start slowly attaching it. Notice at no point that I rushed this process, I did not clap, you know, like clamp my form in and pinched it, nope, nope, nope. You gotta train it where you want it to. Okay, now it's more straight there. Again, it wants to wants to curve downward, but we're not going to let it do that. We're dictating where it goes, and here we are. And that is more straight like this. So notice this is pretty separate. If I brought it closer, this form would go down okay notice now it's more parallel with my bone right more straight there and that's what we're looking for to avoid the whole claw nail okay going into client's view again tipping it or turning it as i need to nice and straight Okay, now what has allowed us to do this also, remember, is the fact that we don't have corners dictating where the form should point. Okay, make sure this is nice and straight also. Like so, if your form is crooked, so will your new nail. So just pinch it in, attach it as soon as you're happy with it. It's gotta touch that nail up there, okay? any of your favorite application brush it can be a square it can be a flat we want to grab a little bit of this extension gel on one side drop a bead and i'm going to carefully form it out even if this is an oval nail you still want to start off a little bit square so that it's thick in all the right places. <laughs> okay. And now that I've decided where I wanted to extend it towards, like how far out, I'm gonna grab a little bit more. And I'm gonna set it right there so that it connects. And here it's a little thicker because I do want it to fill this in bring it around and fill that in totally fine we have a tool to fix any overflow underneath the nail in case you're worried your client is going to pick this is very important remove the excess so that your brush is like paper thin and you can use it like a liner brush now okay Bring it onto the form. 
this corner here touching is so important or you will have breakage same thing here just grab a little bit with the tip of this brush okay i'm going to show you real close what's happening now so you see i have outline okay and again yes there's a little bit seeping and there no biggie bring down the skin a little bit so it allows some product to get in there and now that it's nice and thin exactly where i want it to be i can go ahead and cure this and i'm only going to do a little flash cure i like to do two seconds in my coco's leblanc lamp okay i like to pinch now i don't use pinching tools i don't think you're needed for these type of gels all right so we brought in those corners by giving it that pinch i'm going to give this a full cure now okay here we are full cure 30 seconds i like to remove my form at this point just so i can see what's going on and there we have it we have our nice c curve we were patient with this nail we didn't rush it the most important step is your form so you may be wondering okay paula do i have to do one nail at a time and my answer is in the beginning yes as you get faster two nails and then your thumb separate right two nails two nails thumb separate and then maybe one day you'll get fast enough where you can do thumb the other thumb and then four fingers but don't rush that you will naturally get there okay all right c curve is in free edge is on look it's no longer curving downward it's looking like my other nail so excited and as soon as i file this in more it's even going to be better okay so what i'm going to do now is start overlaying it Now this is one method of how I do my extensions. I actually have like a foolproof method on how to ensure your extension like never ever breaks. I do teach that in my course. Make sure you check out that free masterclass link in the description box below. And then at the end I will tell you more about my course and then boom exactly where i want it this is one thing i love about japanese show it's meant to run a little bit so that it looks just like your nail no unnecessary bulk as long as you pinch a shape in there or a c curve in there you got all the strength you need and now i'm gonna cure all right here we are fully cured i'm gonna go ahead and cover my gel get it out of the way i'm going to remove the tacky layer the inhibition layer off of this tacky layer is just uncured gel that happens because of oxygen in between your curing light and the nail surface Make sure you bring it downward so you don't expose product to your skin and then become allergic. Okay, now we are going to file this into shape. To do so, you want to take a 180 grit board file. And that's about it, really. It's up to you if you work with something harder and you would need to if you have a lot of bulk to remove. So I'm just going to give this a natural shape and file the top with my ceramic bit. Just a gentle little file wherever I think there's like little holes or divots. There's really very little to do here. Okay, I can definitely do it all with my 180 grit board file. 
Now I'm gonna go like this shape, so a little bit more oval. If you wanna learn how to shape, I do have a video showing you how to shape five different ways, the most popular ways to shape nails or enhancements. Make sure you check that at the end of this video. Okay, and here we are finished with that no longer claw nail. I'm just going to go ahead and put a little bit of gel color on this so that you can see how it's like perfectly straight. Now. 